My name's Pat Kelly. Um, I served in the U.S. Army in Vietnam along the DMZ back in 1969-1970. Uh, I was assigned to an artillery unit as an ammunition truck driver. So we hauled uh, ammunition and powder for uh, in five-ton trucks along the DMZ from Quezon to Van de Griff, all along that area. So did that for a year, then back to Fort Sill, Oklahoma, training guys going to Vietnam, and then I got out of the military. I didn't. I was drafted. <laughs> I was in a mo I wanted to be a motorcycle policeman. So I was learning how to drive motorcycles and I got hit by a dump guy who was drunk driving a dump truck. And so it knocked out eight of my teeth, snapped the uh, arm in half with the bone sticking out, both legs lacerated. So they had to put metal pins in. And so I was military, uh, unfit for the military. But then after a year working at a grocery store in the frozen foods, the pins kept freezing. So I went back to the orthopedic surgeon and he says, yeah, it's been a year, we can take them out. So he did the surgery and pulled them out, put a cast on it. What I didn't know is he was a major in the Army Reserves. He notified the draft board when he took the pins out. Two weeks after the surgery, I got a notice to take a physical in Los Angeles. Took a physical, they x-rayed through my arm set me down, came back with a 1A draftable classification. Two weeks later, I was drafted. Uh, back in 2006, I retired. I was a peace officer in Riverside County. And when I retired, I went to work across the street to the Air Museum, volunteered a little bit over there. Then I heard about this service. So I came over and I started in 2006 to 2010 attending the service. And then slowly during that time, the older people that started, started passing away. Uh, the minister that was out here, well, the chaplain actually, he was a Navy chaplain. And then the rest of them slowly passed away. The ones that were left didn't have a computer. So I got volunteered to get the list of names every month. And the next thing I know, I'm doing that. And I'm reading the names and I'm organizing the service. And so I've been doing that for about 10 years now. Jesse Scott, Army, Sergeant, Vietnam. Verdell Edmondson, Army, Staff Sergeant, Vietnam. Timothy. The, the older ones were quite something, especially Rosemary, who passed away a little bit before you got here. And her husband was a Vietnam vet. And when he passed away, she kept coming out, taking his place. So she, we started having her receive the flag. And then, uh, what was it, two days after her daughter died, she still came out to receive the flag. And she kept that up until the day she passed away. And one of her grandsons was one of the Air Force Honor Guards that used to come over. And so when she passed away, the whole Air Force Honor Guard who used to do the ceremony came over with them. So we had quite a crowd over here for that. Started doing the ceremony, then I joined the Cemetery Support Committee, which raises funds for stuff the cemetery can't, because of their budget limits, can't provide. So. If they uh, need a new bus or a Jeep or whatever, some of the support today raises the funds and gives them the money for that. So uh, anytime they need something like the fountains that are in the middle of the lake, they broke down. So we paid uh, 30-some thousand dollars to replace those. The, tomb, uh, the Medal of Honor Memorial, they put the wrong kind of covering over all the shields for the different services. So we paid. I don't remember how many thousands to have them completely redone. And then we've also redone the uh, POW MMI uh, memorial over there because they set up the sprinklers along and it was leaving white streaks all over the uh, black marble over there. So uh, we meet once a month and then whatever the uh, cemetery needs, we provide the money for it. We usually do the Veterans Day ceremony also. We pay for the Riverside uh, Orchestra and all the other money and stuff they need. Beautiful. Yeah. So you're really involved. Uh, a bit, yeah. <laughs> if there was something that you 
could give to maybe someone who's joining the military or someone thinking about joining the military, um, some words of wisdom that maybe you've learned during your service? Or mm. Well, I just had two grandsons join the National Guard in Missouri. And so they're kind of carrying on the family legacy. But um, for them, it, it gives you discipline and it gives you a somewhat what we call a brotherhood. You're working with people you may not have known before, but if you wind up going overseas to war or whatever, they're your brothers. Your life depends on them, their life depends on you. So uh, a lot, you'll hear a lot of Vietnam veterans call each other brother, even though we may never met in Vietnam, but they're just, that's that certain connection that only being in the military you can get.